Hello, everyone. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining. Um, I'm going to ask the participants, if you're not speaking, if you could mute yourselves. I don't think I have the ability to mute you. So Patrick Lopez, can you mute yourself for me? Thank you. So thank you for joining. I started with this slide um, that says you are exactly where you need to be. And um, it's a play on words, but it, it my meaning is that wherever you are in your career, that is exactly where you need to be tonight. Um, my name is Rosie Gordon Wallace and I live and work in Miami. Um, it is my practice to do the land acknowledgement and to thank our um, native nations of the Tequesta, the Calusa, the Taino, and today the Mississuki and Seminole for their elders past and present and the ones to come. Um, we live on borrowed land in these United States and I wanna acknowledge that as we all try to be more conscious of our politics. So I'm going to share my screen um, with the PowerPoint and sort of give you an idea of where I am. But before I start, it's a question that I hear all the time. Um, how can I really actually get an artist grant? Artists, when I do studio visits, artists ask that question all the time. And the career path, you, we all know as artists that our career path can be unpredictable. Grants can supplement your income as an artist. It can help pay for your materials, your studio space, or even your rent. With a little legwork, and searching for the right grant opportunity. And I say right grant opportunity because I'm acknowledging the privilege that I have of living in the United States. Um, but with a little research and legwork, and actually it really takes diligence um, on your application, you should be able to secure a grant. And so tonight I want to just say that I'm doing this from a very privileged position of artists that live here. I did some research and I know that there are grants available to you in the Caribbean, but my goal this evening is that you will see what is required. And more and more in the past two to three years, more and more US foundations, US family foundations are opening up slots for international artists. And they're not changing the, the recommendations of how to apply for the grant. So rather than tailor the, ex, the, the presentation to you as Caribbean artists, I'm doing it to you as artists across the board. So that those of you who come up to do your masters, those of you who come up to do a residency and have to apply for, um, for grants will have this format in, the, in your back pockets and you'll just whiz through to the front of the line. So um, I also want to ask you to please, if you have any questions, to please put them in the chat for me so that I can answer them at the end of, end of our presentation. I'm hoping that you will leave the workshop knowing the components of a grant application. They, they rarely vary um, how to prepare and organize and develop a, a successful grant process how to prepare and request for a proposal, as in i.e. an LOI, a letter of, of inquiry, how to assemble a grant team to create an award-winning grant proposal. And I, I want to say upfront that when I talk about a grant team, I'm thinking about us in the Caribbean that we can really set the example of how we work in collectives. I know you don't think of it that way, but we have passeras in the Caribbean and most of the time you end up working with a friend or a friend of a friend that you can think about collaborating and, and putting your, your proposal in as a collective as, as opposed to doing it as an individual artist, especially since the nonprofit status and the nonprofit, um, the nonprofit way of um, description is different in the United States and in the Caribbean. So I'm aware of that. I'm gonna do the slides individually so I can spend some time on them. 
um, budgets, post-pandemic con considerations, why did they say no? You, you may be asking yourself. I've, I mean, in this hard time, I've sent in my application. I think I've done a good job. Why did I get no for an answer? I tell artists that I work in, and I see Katrina from Jamaica on, on the, the Zoom. Hi, Katrina. Um, uh, if, you're, if your rejection letter pile is not higher than your acceptance pile, you're probably not doing enough. It, and it sounds like a cliche, but really, you should be applying um, to a far uh, variety of organizations in order for them to give you that. So let's do some basics. Um, the, the good thing about Zooms is that I can stay in my office and speak to you in the Cayman Islands and in Jamaica. But the bad thing about Zoom is that I can't have this back and forth with the answers. And so, and those of you who know me know that I, I would be walking around the room and touching and, and asking you to speak with me and calling you out. So bear with me if, as I change to ask you some of these really basic questions. What is a grant? A grant is a conditional gift of funds with strings attached. And I should underline the strings attached because the strings attached will come up later into what that means. When we're looking for a grant, we, we have to pay attention to the fact that um, you, have, you have a small collective or you have an individual practice and you're doing fiber work. You cannot therefore apply, or you shouldn't gear, therefore apply for a grant that's only geared for painters. You're not gonna get it. They're not going to automatically change your, your materials into a material that fits that. So the research part of it um, is really important. The grant cycle, the life cycle of the grant. The grant cycle is also important. When I do a grant, and this is grant season for us, we're in grant L, which is why I just said that only, that only um, Natalia could get me to do this, this, this time. In a grant cycle, what we do here at DVCAI is that we look to see which organizations are funding and what cycle they're funding in. Our fiscal year runs usually, and this is a little extra information, so just bear with me through it. I don't know what your fiscal year is. Ours runs from September, September to from September to October. So we are at the end of coming up to the end of our fiscal year in um, in in August now, which means that we are on life support. Many of the small organizations are on life support, and we're actively now looking at the grant cycle. The proposals. So these are the, the, the six things that you will have to face. Your RFP, or sometimes it is an LOI. Um, the request for proposal or a letter of inquiry are two things, two entrance points that you can enter and engage with the foundation to speak about um, seeking funding. And we'll go in through through the presentation and into what that is. So you're seeking for support. You're, you're going to come to them with what it is that you think that the, the support requires, how much money you're going to be asking for. You're going to request that amount and you have this eligibility with the checkpoint here, you have already checked to see if you're eligible. But I'm going to send the slides out. So um, I'm gonna break my rule and send the slides out in, so that you can get them afterwards, okay? Um, what are some of the tips and strategies? I always say, start early. So we, I just said to you that we are in grant, we're on the back end of a 400 relay grant cycle now. Um, we have already done the research, we've identified the grants we wanna to apply to, um, and we did that three months ago and we listed those grants. And then we listed the, when, the, when the dates, the application dates were due. Think about what will happen um, if the grant asks you, if the grant, one of the grant requirements is, do you have matching funding? This is, I'm putting the information in and I'm going to embellish it later on. 
read the guidelines. Almost every slide I should have a big thing up here saying, read the guidelines, check your discipline. I am in the process now of reading Knight Foundation grants, 289 grants asking folks to give their best idea. But you have to read the guidelines to hear if they ask it for 150 words in your kickoff, in your elevator speech, you cannot give 300. You're not gonna get any extra. As a matter of fact, most of the, the applicants would, um, the foundations will just put your grant aside. How are you going to tell your story and who are you telling it to? You're telling your story to persons who have never heard of you. Chances are they've never heard of you. And especially if you're coming from the Caribbean, they've never heard of you. So your story has to be compelling. You have to have support for the story. And then you have to have support for the story that you've asked for. And that support has to be a monetary ask. And then your support materials your marketing, how it is that you've marketed, marketed it. Review, 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 read the guidelines and check for your discipline. Check to make sure that you're not a sculptor or a ceramicist asking Joe Mitchell to fund your project. Joe Mitchell does painters, so you're not, no matter how good a, a proposal you send, they're not going to pay attention to it. I put this slide in because I want you to start thinking about, as artists, how you can partner with another or two or three artists to develop a strong proposal. We tend to, we, and I say we, I'm talking about here in the United States, are small organizations, one of which we're a part, that's provide, is a small organization. We tend to work in silos. The, the foundations are now encouraging us to work in collectives in a way that I think is very encouraging. So that if you have four fiber artists and you have a project, it would be nice if four, the four artists got together, made one solid proposal, did the research, divvied up the work. So if, um, if Paulette is good at doing research, then we would ask Paulette to do the research. If, if Kadea is good at, at, at writing, she would write. Divide the work up so that the burden of, of preparing the grant doesn't come so, isn't so laborious. So the research again, um, I have here board members because remember in the United States, we work on the non-for-profit, um, a strong 501c3 um, designation, <coughs> excuse me. Within that group, somebody always have a second pair of eyes to read whatever it is that you have um, proposed. In this, in this slide, this accountant is not a misplaced um, um, placeholder. It is here because if you are working, whether you're working independently or you're working within a, an institution or you're working by yourself, ask your your friend who is an accountant or your accountant for your taxes to look over your budget to make sure that your revenue and your expenses are, are, um, are balanced. And if you work solo, um, more power to you. All of these things still need to happen in getting the work done. Funding sources. In the United States, we have three main funding sources, government, um, state and federal, um, private foundations, which are the majority of funding that can really take you to the next level, and family foundations. I looked it up in the Caribbean, and I realized now, especially in Jamaica and in Trinidad and Tobago, that they are modeling this, this um, paradigm that I have here. Um, not so much government and federal, I see Katrina rolling our eyes, um, but private foundations and family foundations and international foundations are stepping in to offer funding as well. So your funding sources um, are usually looking like this. I'm gonna go through these quickly because they're geared to US artists, but I'm very aware that many of you live by coastal lives. And so you may come up here for a residency and while you're in the United States, or you may have a, a, um, a 
a resident visa and once you have a resident visa remember most of these grants what they used to call a green card you can apply for grants as well okay um this is recorded i'll tell you off the rec off the recording how that that happens federal and state grants awards are based on strict guidelines and objective evaluations and formal very very formal reporting and a, an example of a federal grant here would be like NEA, which is a very prestigious grant, right? National Endowment for the Arts or the NEH, National Endowment for the Humanities. When an organization gets those grants, it means that you have kind of put on big boy pants because you've been able to do all of these things here. The private foundations tend to be more relational, which means that a part of the activity of those of us looking for grants we have to build community and community means you have to build relationships they are a lot more subjective they're more personal and they have most of them have a less rigorous um, reporting component the family foundations i find a little cliqueish i just say that here they're usually single families they are single family foundation Recommendation for, um, for funding is usually based on relationships. So somebody knows somebody and the family um, and recommends you, or they're in what is called a community foundation. So a community foundation will host the Coombs and the Goldburns and the Warren and the McPherson's um, found family foundation, and then they dispense the funds. It's a little more tricky for you to get funding from them, but it is, it's, it's one of the ways in which we get family um, foundation funding. I, I, I'm trying to tailor the, the presentation so that you, you know that I did some homework myself. Um, in the, the Cayman National Cultural Foundation, you can get a, a, apply for a grant for an individual artist. Um, a practical endeavor, I'm not quite sure what that means. It doesn't translate here. So probably someone can put that in the chat to explain that to me. And arts research. I find that arts research is a kind of tricky, um, a tricky uh, nomenclature for, for granting because you have to do research for all of your grants. And so unless your practice is embedded in arts research, I wasn't quite sure how to translate that. And maybe what it does mean is that you can apply for a grant just to do research. And there are some of those here in the United States as well, although it's not labeled like this. Ministry of Culture is um, uh, uh, one of the ways in which you um, dispense funding in the, in the region. Um, we have our Ministry of Culture is our National Endowment of the Arts. We don't, it's not called that same, that with that um, title. But in Jamaica, I know our Ministry of Culture and the Minister of um, Sports and Education are spaces where you may be able to get some support. But the culture of grant making, the, the philosophy of um, the 2%, giving back to an arts um, ecosystem is not a culture that is, um, I'm going to say mature in the Caribbean. It's maturing, but here in the United States, it's embedded in how nonprofits work. We wouldn't be able to do work without our ability to apply for grants. Um, in the Caribbean, I'm noticing that there are some um, a lot more regional grants, Catapult, um, which gave grants throughout the Caribbean. Not a lot of money, though, and it's not a criticism, it's just an observation. 500 to, to 17, 18, 30 artists. Fresh Milk in, in Barbados also gives um, a, a grant, grant, also grants, um, granting funds. Um, and these are called regional grants. Corporate grants, I, I noticed that um, DART, I didn't, put, um, I didn't put Prince Klaus because Prince Klaus has really strict um, recommendations for you to apply for. And I thought that since we're looking at the English speaking Caribbean and in particular Cayman, I, it, it didn't apply as well. And there are a few others that I have listed that I'll talk about at the end when we're talking about specifics, okay? 
No, don't forget that we have we we are now in in a space of the of internet real estate. And crowdfunding, although not um, utilized here for nonprofits as much, crowdfunding in the Caribbean is one of the ways in which you can think about applying for grants. And um, because the internet allows this non-biased way of, of geography. So you can do a Kickstarter, you can do um, Indigo, you can do a GoFundMe. Um, these are not easy platforms. I mean, and I'm saying it, I've seen people do it. Sometimes you, you, you fundraise $1,500 and the funding platform holds on to 500. Those are the kinds of negotiations that you have. I find them tedious. And so it's not as easy as, um, as I'm, I hope I'm not making it sound easy, but it is another form that without proper government structure and funding that you can use. And these are the, the ones that I found. Mighty Cause, I didn't know a lot about it, but I call a couple of artists. And I, apparently if you need a, you know, a couple of thousand dollars, it's one that, it's a platform that you can use. Does anybody in the, in, in, in the audience know about Mighty Cause? You can use your, your reaction and put your thumb up, thumb down. No, okay. So, but these are what my research brought up. So just to, to make a nod, to give a nod to what, um, what happens in, in the crowdsourcing um, thing. Ah, so you, you've, you've decided that you have a project that's worthy. And I wish I could go through some of the ones that I'm actually reading now with you. And um, probably one-on-one -on -one a week, if you're doing a project, we can, have a chat afterwards. The proposal development and submission is really important because if, you're, if you have an idea, you should really organize that idea. I'm calling it the mission statement because I'm thinking about an institution and I'm also trying to encourage you to think about coll um, collectives or collaboratives or groups. Um, but even then you should be able to define almost like an elevator pitch what your mission is. And um, this is a, a good example of an organization that's going to use social transformation, empower children, they're going to have full potential and positively affecting their society through the study and performance of music. So this is a music grant. But just reading what their intention is allows the grant writer, the grant reader, the panelists, to understand exactly what you are. So although this may be targeted to a bigger type organization, I really think that if you structure your work like this, you should have much more success. This is the nitty gritty of the grant. So you've talked about your idea. I want to build three sculpture pieces in an open land across from the Cayman Museum. And they're going to be six feet high, three feet wide, and they're going to be fabricated using concrete. That's your, your overall overriding mission. The narrative has to go into what, how are you going to do it? Um, who are you going to use? Um, what is this proposal going to look like? So you couldn't just say you're going to be doing three sculpture pieces. Are they going to be six feet high? Are they going to be laid with, 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 with laminate? So you're going to use different kinds of materials. The proposal description tells the broader part of the, of, the, of the story. What impact is it going to have? Is it going to be close to the road so five million cars can see it? Is the everyday ordinary community person going to be able to, to look at it and have an impact or, in, or an effect on their quality of life? How are you going to manage it? Is it going to require um, attendance, cleaning, maintenance? How are you going to manage it? And what's the accessibility? If you can succinctly and clearly articulate this, um, you are well on your way to some level, to a greater level of maturity in the grant writing. And one thing I want to also say, there's no mystery in this. Most of the grantors that give significant funding will allow not the family foundations and not the private foundations, but the government grants 
will allow you to ask for um, applicants that have done grants before and scored high. And I have a bunch of those grants that have been um, scored because I serve on panels in order to give back to my community. Um, that I may, that I, you know, I can um, eliminate the private information and share what a true mission statement looks like, what a strong proposal looks like. And recently for this year, um, grantors are asking for DEI um, statements, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion statements for your, for your organization, even if you're an individual artist. They're asking you to make a declaration of how it is that you see the world as well. What's your request amount? I put this here especially because, you know, in reading the grants, if a grant has a limit of um, for instance, like a Knight Foundation grant will give you a limit of up to 200,000. Um, it doesn't make sense for you to ask for 500,000. It sounds, it sounds um, like, a, you know, I would never make that mistake. Those kinds of mistakes are made all the time. Not necessarily with those large numbers. 5,000 range of a request. Some folks will ask for a, a request for 6,500. Those things don't make your application score high. What is your operating budget? And I know that you think that, oh, I'm just a little artist. I'm just a, you know, a single artist. Um, why do I need to have an operating budget? The budget, the words may sound fancy, but really what the grantor is asking you is, how much is it going to cost for you to do this? Don't forget to pay yourself. Remember that you are, a, a, you are the asset, you're a private contractor, so that your operating budget has to have your salary. And Katrina has heard me say this before. If you, if you can't assign a week, uh, an hourly amount for your time and talent, then you need to start doing that today. When I'm, when I'm creating work, what is this hour that I'm using to create work? What, what, what is, what is the, the, the value for that hour? And you build your operating budget through those things. What is your material? What transportation? Are you going to have to travel to the United States to get a particular kind of fabric to use, a particular kind of, 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 of thread, a particular kind of glaze? Those things are part of your operating budget. Please ignore this board list because we're not talking to a nonprofit. But if we were, if I were speaking to, um, to the Cayman Museum board, the Cayman Museum organization, then I would ask them to look at the diversity and equity of their board. And that this board list should, re should reflect the diversity and equity of, their, of the community that they're serving. And this is becoming really, really strict in the, in the granting world here in the States. I cannot over or I cannot underscore or overstate the fact that your budget is really important. Um, and don't forget that if for argument's sake, you are doing a project and the museum afforded you three days in the museum for you to use a space, Quantify what that means dollar wise and use it as your matching funds. The grant will ask you if you, in, in a really, sometimes in a really tricky way, if you're not able to get the funding from us, will you be able to do the project? If you can state that you have collaborative support that would be in kind support or matching support, it, it makes for us much stronger um, application. How are we doing for time? After um, this, I'll just mention this. And in, in when I'm speaking to, to foundations or I'm speaking to organizations, I always talk about avoid mission drift. But to individual artists, what this means is stay true to your practice. A grant is giving you uh, money for ceramics. Don't try to squeeze in to be a videographer if you're, if you're not a photographer. You know what I'm saying? Or if that is not your lane. Try to stay within the, the um, your funding sources. Funding does afford you to be more sustainable. 
focused and um, productive. It should really do that. Check in the fit. And what do I mean by that? Your goals, your eligibility, check your deadlines to make sure that the grant is due September 9th, that you're not trying to send it in um, on the morning of September 10th. It's not gonna work. Also, don't wait until the deadline for you to submit. If, if it is a popular grant, hundreds of people are applying for the grant. And although technology is fabulous, you and I know that the internet has a way of just spiting you. The night before your grant is due, you can't get it up and nobody's gonna care if that happens. Um, some of these don't apply for individual artists. So let me just skip those and move on. You've seen this now in three slides, reading the entire guideline. It's probably two to three pages of guidelines that are not set to, to, to um, trip you, but they're used to trip you, the, the, the guidelines. So try to read them. They may say, if, you, if you're applying for the first time, you may not have to fill out questions two and three. But if you haven't read the guidelines, you're obviously going to do that. Word counts, very important. 150 word count is 150 word count. And some of them say characters, spaces, everything. Read the guidelines to see what that says. Um, grant timeline start and deadlines are really important because the deadlines will allow you to set up a matrix for your final reports, which are really important if you're going to continue to have an engagement with that funder. I cannot underscore, and those of you who know me know, I believe in collaboration. Um, if I can be a part of your grant, call me and say, Rosie, I'm applying for a grant. I don't have a partner. Would your organization partner and collaborate with me so that I can have a stronger application? Those are, that's the kind of conversation I'm speaking about. Or you have a ministry um, friend, somebody in the treasury department or the education department, who has a portfolio, ask and see if they can will collaborate with you so that you can, with integrity, say that the Minister of Education is supporting this and they send you a support letter. Um, the evaluation of, of, of your application is also very important for you to know what, it, what criteria they're going to use and for you to make sure that you have that criteria um, understood and adhered to. I cannot tell you how many small organizations, and it is distressing to share, who are, who are unable, not willing, they just don't do it, do the reporting on time. When you don't do your reporting on time, your grant is flagged if you're doing to the same fund. And you will run out of funders if you say, well, there are five of them, I'll just apply to the five. This, this is really where the ethics comes in about literally using someone's money without telling them how you use it. The reporting, and I'm just gonna spend a little time here. The reporting is important and um, because while you're spending the grant dollars, you should be documenting what you're spending it on. Taking photographs, making little, little I, I say you could do a podcast or you can do um, an Instagram post. Um, Facebook uh, iterations, whatever it is that you do, those things, those items, those actions can be a part of your reporting, but there's nothing like a beautiful photograph. I started the presentation with a wonderful LED photograph to show you the kind of quality that you're gonna need to be able to do that. I want to say again that telling your story is really, really important. You don't have to start from when you were in kindergarten, but you certainly have to say how it is that your ideas imbue and embed the materials with life. How it is that you turn um, a piece of wood. Uh, there's an artist, Kath um, Catherine Mays, who says she breathes life into wire. How it is that you do that, that is really what is going to be compelling in order for you to get your story done. How do you tell the story? Obviously this sounds very basic with facts. 
with your history, you, you, uh, the language that you use, short sentences, not these long, compelling, long-winded sentence, sentences that the panel is going to get lost in. Remember, they're reading more than your application. Demonstrate the knowledge of the work. So that I'm talking about the fact that I'm a photographer. I want to tell them what equipment I'm using, what lens. Am I going to use a dark room? Um, is this going to be digital? Do I switch out? And if I switch out, do I get better results? Measure the impact as you talk about it. Validate the eligibility for funding. Let me feel that I want to fund you. A lot of times funders will talk and say, you know, I wasn't able to fund Katrina this year. But if she, if she applies with, to you, please support her. Her application was strong. We were just looking for a different angle, which is why reading the, the application outline is really important. Questions we should answer. And this is for the bigger grants. And when I list them to you later on, you, you will be able to see why I'm putting this here. What's the demographic data? You live in, on the top of a mountain and your, your student is down in the ravine. There is going to be hardship. How do you relay that hardship in getting to your studio every day to do the work? Two sentences. It's a 16 mile drive to my studio back and forth. Many nights I'm there till two o'clock in the morning and have to sleep over. These human experiences allow the grantor to see need without just saying, Lord, it's so hard to go down the street, I can't get there. You know, you tell the same tale with a different language. How are you connecting the dots? I just did that a while ago. How is your program promoting learning? That's another component that many of the grants are asking for now. Is there an educational component? Have you given a talk at a museum? Did you, did you volunteer to give a talk to, to um, shut-ins using your materials to make it valuable? Some, some grantors are asking you to prove that you have leadership skills. I've seen it more and more in some of the social justice grants, asking you, um, and really that question points to professional development. How, have you invested in yourself? Katrina, again, I have to, I'm pointing her out. She knows I'm a big proponent of going to learn more. About, your, about the landscape and about your work. This doesn't relate here, but just, just hold on to this graphic and think about questions that you want to answer when you're doing stuff. What have you done? Who participated? Who benefited? What is important? How will funding increase your success? Of all of these five um, questions that I'm poking you to, you have to have a couple sentences that say what the money is going to be used for. And yes, you're going to pinch a little bit of your admin money to, to pay rent and pay your car payment, but that's admin. The program, part of your dollars have to talk directly to how the funding is going to be used. I ask artists before you apply to ask yourself, what do you want to achieve? with this grant. Um, and if we were in a room, I would stop you and just ask you to, to think about that. What are you going to use the money to do is basically what we're saying and how is it going to help you to focus your, your efforts? No one wants to invest in you if next year you're at the same place that you were the year before. If you needed 50, 50 gallons of paint and you're only able to buy five, we know you can't do the project. Right. So that's that's it's the in between of the, the of what the ask is that they're really checking on. What does progress look like to you? You know, for me, I answer this really, really. This is a very difficult question to answer, because if you if you have not gotten a grant in, in five years and you've been applying in five years, it doesn't mean that you haven't been successful. You can quantify what success means. Success means that you're resilient. Success means that you, you, you were able to keep your studio open during, during COVID. Success means that you're able to share your studio during COVID with two other artists who lost their studio. There are many ways that we can define success other than saying, I sold five paintings. 
selling five paintings is goes to your bottom line, but doesn't necessarily go towards your professional success. Remember that we're looking for validation. Remember that we're looking to, to propel our, our, our um, professions, our profession so that you can ultimately have, what is that? The solar show in the big, big museum. Everybody wants a solar show in the big museum. And it's going to take you there if you move this, your progress along. What are some of the resources you need to attain these results? Um, I think that I'm going to speak just about focus on your practice. You have to do the work. Um, it's 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 it sounds simple, and as you do the work, your confidence will be enhanced in um, in taking your 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 skill set to another level. You know, there's no quick fix for not doing the work. <laughs> you know, I don't care how many degrees you have. You have to be able to practice to, to have the work enhanced. Um, you need to have a place to do the work. You need time to do the work. You need resources to do the work, which is why you're asking a grantor to, to invest in you. You also need community to do the work. Because if you're working in a vacuum, your work won't progress. You will not be able to have what I call a little girl, little boy, um, eye in the sky kind of things. What is that? Doesn't look like, you know, how a child will look at your work and say, that doesn't look like a face. And you may just chuckle, but in truth and in fact, children tell us the truth. It doesn't look like a face. Um, so the community, and as I gave the example of the child, is, is the community that can nurture you and point you sometimes into the right direction. And then finally, you need to have some deadlines. Nothing kicks us up in our work like when we have a deadline. You have a deadline for an exhibition, right? Not if you agree with me, you know you're gonna be working towards that deadline to make sure that that work gets done in the time. But if you have time, space, resources, community, um, those four ingredients. And of course you have the talent, the student, which is why you're here, um, but it's not the first thing you need to, su to succeed. What might prevent you from achieving these results? I don't need to go into that. You know, um, you're tired, you're run down, you're emotionally drained. You have a, a bunch of your kids around and you can't focus a husband that doesn't clear some space for you to clear your head all kinds of things. These, this is when I ask artists to guard your inner spirit because you're giving all the time and you're telling your story over and over. Um, make sure that you, you protect your mindfulness. Make sure that there is a wellness component so you're not just wringing yourselves out. And eventually, if that, if, if, if that ill health continues, you will not be able to attain your goals. Uh, some of the things when I do this workshop, I always talk about vision and it may not be related, relatable here, but I'm gonna say it anyway. In this work, is this work important for this neighborhood? Will it strengthen the economy? Will the activities build leadership? Um, promote diverse populations, assist in developing communities. When the bigger grants, like the big Ford grants and Andrew Warhol grants always ask you for a vision statement. It's a very, I find it a very difficult statement to give, but what they're really asking you for is a, is a wider vision, not just of the work, but the impact that it will have around you. What is the target? dates that you have to accomplish these goals. So your vision will give you setting up your goals and your timeline for that funding period is also very important. I just read a grant yesterday where the grant period is 2021 to 2022. We make this mistake all the time. And consistently through the grant, 
the, the, the grantee was asking for a period of 2020, 2021, because obviously they were cutting and pacing um, an application that was previously submitted and probably not funded. Those kinds of errors are, are just, you know, unforgivable. You're not going to get past the, the grantor with it. Um, I think we've done enough of that. Um, management. Reporting history. I talked a little bit, bit about paying attention to your reporting history. Every time somebody gives you money, you should find a way of acknowledging it. Um, I cannot tell you how frequently you artists don't do it. It takes nothing off you to say um, work was created with the funding from Diaspora Bad Cultural Arts Incubator, um, the Cayman um, National Museum, Fresh Mill. Give your funder the, 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 the nod that they are due. Use a logo, use a statement. The reporting history is really important because that is where you get a chance to quantify how the, the grant has supported you. Looking at your operating budget also is important because it tells you, you must have your revenue and you must have your expense. It doesn't have to be a fancy budget. A list of things that you're going to have to spend the money on and a list of things, how you're going to fund it. The revenue is the money coming in, the, the money going out is your expense and they should balance. You should make them balance. You need $100 worth of materials, you're going to get $100 worth of revenue. And if you have excess, put it somewhere else. But when you're requesting the dollars, try to make your budget balance. Um, your evaluation comes in um, in some of the bigger grants, not so much the smaller grants. And in the NEA, as I mentioned earlier, the, the big government grants, they're asking you for three years of programming and three years of budget. They're asking you to project, oh, I'm not sure what a government grant in, in the Cayman would do in terms of that. Sustainability talks to your ability to stay alive and to continue to do the work. I've been working for five years. I've been working for 20 years. It's it, a, a simple statement like that shows you your sustainability. Um, in the States, we have to talk about <clears throat> places that we're doing the activities. You know, I talked about some of the things that you need. In, in the Caribbean, I'm not sure we pay as much attention to this, but I still want it in your psychic. If you are work, working with me to do a grant and I am putting your exhibition in a space that is not accessible to folks that have physical challenges, they would not fund me. So in the Caribbean, I know that these challenges are not always paid attention to, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be aware of it, right? If you're going to be mounting uh, an exhibition somewhere, Think about your audience. What if someone should come? How would they get to this, to this exhibition? And if they can't come to the exhibition physically because they're in a wheelchair, what mechanisms do you have in place to ensure that the, the, the person or persons um, see it? You can videotape the exhibition and show it on a monitor outside. We have to start thinking about the ways in which we are most more inclusive. Um, I'm at 8.54, which is nine o'clock. Um, I, I didn't do writing the budget. I, uh, I think it's a lot for one night. Um, maybe we can, we can do this another time. Um, some of the things that I'm, I haven't covered, I didn't show you a budget, an actual budget like this, what it should look like. Um, but I think it's a lot and I wanted to take some questions from you. So, um, what are we gonna do? We're gonna read the outlines, read the requirements of the grant, right? We're gonna make sure that we read the guidelines, check your discipline. We're gonna make sure that your narrative is, is a strong narrative that tells a story. You're going to ask for support clearly. Funded, funding, funding is requested for, funds are requested to do. One sentence, clear. 
I am requesting $175,000 to build $16. Clear, so that the person reading your grant understands it. Your budget should be able to validate what you're asking for and tell the, the, the panelists how it is that you're going to fund it. You're going to use their money to fund it. So you're going to tell them how you're going to use the money to fund it and how it is that you're going to market it. I'm going to stop there um, and take some questions. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. Hold on one second, Kadir. Hold on. Let me just see if there's anything that I haven't told you that I want to tell you. Um, okay. I just want to tell you thank you. Thank you for listening. Um, it's a lot because I, when I do this here, I do it in two days because we do the workshop where I actually work through a budget with you. you I would call on you, Kadir, and I would say, what are you asking for money for? Let's work through a budget. So when you leave something like this, you know exactly the, the, the um, line items that you would have in the budget as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. This work is by Selena Roman, an artist here that lives in Sarasota. And she's a photographer. Ah, let me drink some water. Thank you so much. So if anyone has any questions they would rather type, you can go ahead and add that to the chat and we'll go through those. Katie, did you have a question? First of all, Rosie, I want to say thank you so much. I found this very um, eye-opening and, and very informative. So thank you so, so much for your time. Um, there's something I wasn't quite clear on. It was the master found, found into your objective. Um, I wasn't quite clear on that. What does that mean? Um, and I couldn't, you're, you're a spotty in-, in uh, I'm sorry. What are you asking? Sorry? Did you, hear what, did you hear when I say thank you? Thank you for- I heard you. when you said thank you. Yes, yes. so thanks again. <laughs> what, did you, <laughs> what did you mean about matching um, the founding, found, founding to, your, to your objective? Okay. So what that means, it's, 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 it's simpler than it sounds. You are requesting $500 to build a doll, right? Okay. But you're, you're in an art ecosystem. We know that $500, unless you're going to put a little gold leaf, right? You mm -hmm. wouldn't be making a regular cotton doll with $500. Okay. So the funding, the funding matter must match the funding request. Got you. Okay. D yeah. Don't 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 think that. And it goes both ways. You're building a building that costs a thousand dollars, but you're only asking for seventy five. Nobody's going to give it the seventy five because we know that the funding doesn't match the request. Got you. That's quite clear. realistic with what you're asking for, so that your budget, which is where your budget comes in. Because if you have a proper budget, your materials will be able to match the request. See what Got I'm you. Yeah. Yes. All right. I have two more questions and I won't feel long. <laughs> I don't mind. Go ahead. All Come right. On. The next question is like, I wasn't clear on this before because I thought you're supposed to just apply as a solo artist. Um, and so when you mentioned about the collaboration as a team, I found it very, very interesting. Never mm -hmm. before. So that idea is that I would have to find others who are in like, and team together for this one project. Okay. What is your genre? What is what materials are you working with? I'm not acrylic. I'm, I'm an acrylic artist. You're an acrylic artist. So you're a yes. painter? Do you paint? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you're 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 applying to do a mural, right? Yes. And you could form a collective with with Paulette and 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 Patrick, who the people who don't have their faces on. You could form a collective with them and present one budget for a nine, we just did it the other day, a, a 1300 foot wall, right? I found yes. a collective of three artists, pitched it so we could get the money to do the work because we know that there is strength in numbers. 
So, so first of all, you'd have to have a project that is substant, substantive enough for you to want to bring somebody else on it. Gotcha. Okay. For instance, the hotel has five rooms and they want a painter to paint something in the five rooms. Yes, you could do it by yourself. But if I'm a hotel manager, you said to me, I have a collective. There are three of us and we're going to come in and do it. It's a whole different. First of all, they're going to look at you differently. They're going to think that, hey, this, 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 this lady is about business because she's getting ready to go to something else, right? It, okay. it, 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 it makes you look very mature. It also increases your budget because you have three people to pay. <laughs> yes. Right? Three yes. people to pay, three sets of material, right? Yes. And, and you know that when they ask you for the deadline, when they want that painting to be done in a month, you know that you're not going to stress yourself. You're going to be able to do it in a month, hand it over to them, give them the report, give them their certificate of authenticity. When you're doing public work, you still should give a certificate of authenticity. Okay. Right? Because okay. that work is a part of your portfolio. Okay. Moving forward. So <laughs> nothing that you do now should be casual. You should okay. have a folder of all the work that you're doing, whoever owns that work, so that when you're asking for funding, you can point to this as a part of your history. Okay. Some of the, 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 the funding um, sources, I didn't put them up and, um, because it's frustrating if you're in the Caribbean and you can't apply for them. But some of them that you can apply for, there is one called the Awesome Foundation. Awesome, as in awesome. This is and in Cayman? Um, this, this is in the States, but if you have a green card, you can apply if you're a resident. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm you and I know right how green, you and <laughs> yes. I know. Uh, over, are we recording this session as well? Okay. I have it still going. Would you like me to stop it? Yeah, I would like you to okay. stop because I'd like to Stopping tell some. Um,